So we're going back to the Cumberland Farms. So well. same Cumberland Farms. We're back at the Cumberland <laughs> Farms. Listen. So this this is a it's a weird place. I don't really know. Like so, it's in Warwick. It's like right at kind of near Chell's by the sea, Chell's waterfront. Oh, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Okay, it's at the Rotary. Okay, mm-hmm. so it gets it gets this weird crosswind of people. Like some people totally normal, some people definitely not normal. I'm in line paying, going to pay for my coffee the other morning, and this two ladies behind me are just they're look they're like definitely from like around the corner. They didn't drive there; they walked there to get their coffees. They're from like the neighborhood right there, and they're chit chatting away, chit chatting away, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Would you look at this girl?" And like there's this <laughs> this guy and this girl walking into Cumberland Farms. And the guy is in a tank top and a bathing suit, and she's in a bikini with flip flops, and and they're both like totally offended that she's wearing a bikini. Now, whether or not this girl should have been wearing a bikini, that's not this conversation. This lady is, she's, she they're both like, she can't come in here like this, like it's fucking Saks Fifth Avenue. It's a fucking <laughs> Cumberland Farms, with <laughs> fucking slushy all over the ground. The ground, the floor in Cumberland Farms is perpetual, perpetually sticky. And you're t- this girl can't come in in a bikini? Are you fucking mad? I want to turn around and be like, do you know where you are? Right. <laughs> this isn't some, like any this place- isn't Ruth's Chris. Yeah, any place you can get a hot dog for a dollar, they can't be hot dog for a dollar off and for get it yourself. <laughs> yes, self serve. Any place where you can get a hot dog and start eating it before you pay for it, <laughs> that is that is a place where you can wear a bikini in the store. Yeah. I don't care. There's no dress. You, I mean, honestly, she could have came in there topless. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> who's gonna fuck? Who's gonna who's gonna yell at her? Nobody. Right. The Cumberland Farms employee doesn't want to be there. It's part you of know? the game. It's part of the game. If you want to just get gas and get out of there, stay at your car and pay with a card. If you want yeah. to come into, the- if you want to come into Cumberland Farms and get saucy, then you gotta know what you're getting into. <laughs> right. You what were the, the, the what were the people like trying to call this woman out wearing? Were they like? I mean, they were they like? They weren't fucking dressed to the nines. They were. I mean, they were. I, no. I didn't. I didn't really get a good look at them, but they definitely weren't more dressed up than. I mean, I don't like know. Like shorts and a t-shirt. Like, they, like the ladies behind me and this lady in the bikini could have been at the same barbecue and it would have looked normal. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, like, it's not like they were wearing, like, a fucking gown and diamond earrings dripping in farms. dripping in uh, yeah, gems. Yeah, of, of all places to get all snooty. I just couldn't believe it. It's like, she, the, the, the exact words were, she's like, she can't come in the store like this. <laughs> the like, store. Like the this? Station. This store? Is it? Is it a nice Cumberland Farms? Like, is it all redone in there? Well, and... sure. It's a new Cumberland Farms. But does that like do you ever see the videos online of all the McDonald's that people get into fights at that night? Like the re- the renovated McDonald's? That's not people. <laughs> no. It doesn't yeah, matter. It's still no, Cumberland it, Farms. No, I was just I was just thinking of that that the these people would have a rude awakening if they ever went to the Cumberland Farms, like right at right near uh on Smith Street, right near North Providence Town Hall. <laughs> yeah, right. That place that place must be that place must be built on an old cigarette factory because it stinks <laughs> like cigarettes over there. But, <laughs> and but, it's so gross. But also talk another, about riffraff. Another outside an, of that place. Another point for the bikini girl is that this is, I mean, that area of Warwick is clearly a like not a beach town, but a like it's. You're in a different environment. This is not somebody walking into a Cumberland Farms in downtown Providence in a bikini. Like, which would still be fine. It's fucking Cumberland Farms. But this is like the marine. There's a bunch of marinas right there. There's a bunch of places to like go on the beach, go in the water. So like, it's it's okay for that. Also for that area, like, you know, what right. I mean, like you, like those like- Taco Bell cantinas that are built on the beach. You know, like people are flocking in there in in sandals and tank tops and bathing suits. But maybe not the Taco Bell in North Smithfield. You know what I mean? Like maybe you're not going into that one in sandals. And but it's not that it's not right. But it's just like that's the area. That's what you're. That's what right. you're doing. She, she came straight from the beach. It's not like she was at home in her swimming pool and then decided no. to go to Cumberland Farms. No, no. I just thought it was so funny that that these ladies were so appealed that this little girl was coming into come with she can't in bikini. Come in here. Can't, she can't dress like that. That's not that's not that's against code. What code? The code that you're supposed to you're supposed to grab the buns with one tongue and the hot dog with the other tongue. Those codes you're by. <laughs> not you have to wear certain clothes when you're doing that. 
God forbid you can get you, you can get chili at the push of a button, but you can't wear a bikini in there. <laughs> God damn it. All right, well, you're on fire. Oh man, this Cumberland Farms is great. I gotta be honest with you. It's great. And also, like, I'm starting to like because I get there around the time where everybody's like getting ready for work. And so it's like there's like four different types of people. There's the people who are up there just getting their coffee. There's the people who are getting their fucking million scratch tickets. The people that are buying a fucking carton of cigarettes. You know, and then you got the people that are just getting like a like a breakfast, quick breakfast bar or something from like the hot food ready section. It's like all the people just 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 pure. It's all just addictions. It's all just mm-hmm. food, gambling, cigarette addictions. That's all it is. Caffeine addictions. That's all it is. One of the uh, one of the guys that works at the Cumbies near me, he he, I went in there the other day to like get some ice cream or something, and uh, nice guy. Just chatting up with him, then I noticed the uh, beautiful pentagram necklace around <laughs> on his shirt. It's like, oh, all right, here we, here we go. Probably Hail stay Satan. clear of him. Hail Satan! <laughs> Hail Satan! Uh, welcome to the Average Nobody's number one two five for July nineteenth, twenty twenty one. I I am Matt, and the the two average nobodies, well, the three average nobodies are all here today. We are. Ryan's here. Ryan's here. Also, also, Adam is here. We got a is hell of a sh- we got a hell of a show for you. We are drafting movies' most iconic pets. We're gonna do celebrity mm-hmm. riddles as told by Ryan Fogarty, and we got some what we're watching coming up. So you can you can find us at averagenobodies.com, at averagenobodies on Twitter, uh, youtubecom slash nobodies, and also wherever podcast services are found: Spotify, Apple Podcasts. There you go. Uh, celebrity birthdays? It's time for everyone's favorite game show, Celebrity Birthdays. Who is it? Who is it? It's Ryan. <laughs> um, so we talked about this before the podcast. Today, not the best day for celebrity birthdays. Tomorrow okay. is much better. So I've mixed and matched. No, I'm just kidding. I, I just, <laughs> I had a, I had a stretch. So we'll see how many of these you guys get. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you guys. Remember last time we did celebrity birthdays, there was one we were pretty stumped on, and uh, I forgot who it ended up being. But like one of our guesses, I can't remember if it was if it, which one of us said it, but one of the guesses was Harrison Ford, and it, obviously it wasn't his, it wasn't him. But Harrison Ford's birthday was the next day. Really? Wow. Wow. Yeah. See, we knew. It's instinct. When you've been Intuition. doing it this long, it's just instinct. That's how good we are. It's how good. <laughs> All right. We have seven. So I really stretched it out. We'll, we'll see how, you, how good you guys do. Uh, okay. Leading it off, with hair like Roland Shirella, this rock and roll legend might feel under pressure to find somebody to love on his birthday tonight. Oh, man. Adam. Under pressure? It, fuck. Wait a sec. Oh, man. I know who it is. I just don't know his name. It's, it's the guitarist from Queen. Fuck! Uh, God damn it! What is his name? Yeah, I, I don't know his name. I, Matt, you can if if you is you this, get you get dibs on that is one. Something May. It is. Fuck! Oh, ah! it's Brian May. God damn it! <laughs> right. No, Matt, I'll, I'll give you that one. I would Fuck. I would have never gotten it if you didn't if you didn't oh, say that. So God. Matt, Man you you a, get the full point. Hair like a goddess. Hair oh, like okay. a goddess. And for those of Brian you know May. those listening who aren't North Providence Cougars, Roland Shirella was a, a teacher at our high school. <laughs> Fun fact, I've seen his penis. That's God. yeah. Uh, me too. <laughs> yep. I think we all have. Uh, um, he still roams the streets in my in my old neighborhood where my parents Yeah, lived. we still last time I was at your parents, so he's always there, just power walking his ass off. Yeah, and he also he's a uh, super first of all, super nice guy. Um, yes. he, he you can hear him on the phone from our like my parents' house. <laughs> like when we do the draft at the pool, you're gonna be able to hear him on the phone. If he has his doors open in the summertime, you can hear him. Very I loud. feel like he's, he reminds me of some, or strikes me as someone who's just always on the phone. Uh, yes, he, he actually yes, he is on the phone a lot, and uh, he's a huge Cowboys fan. Fun fact about Ronald Shrell. Oh, hey, maybe him and <coughs> JL gotta hang out. <laughs> maybe I think he know. I think he knows. He knows that he always talks to John about the Cowboys. I would. I would really like to see that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Brian May, the guitarist from Queen, it's his birthday today. How old is Brian May, Matt? Hmm. He is. Oh, 69. Damn, I was going to say 69. Too late. I already said it. 68. 
Brian May is 74 today. Damn, Ooh. okay. Okay. Yeah, looking good for 74. <laughs> Great movie, um, by the way. That uh, that bio- biopic, biopic, whatever they did recently with... Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes, very good. Yes, very well done. All right, moving on to the next one. With his charm, intelligence, and good looks, it's no wonder woman like this French actor. Fuck. Might, you're probably not going to get his name, but you should know the character. There's no wonder woman like this famous actor. Could you say it again? Uh, French actor. Yeah, French actor. So he's Moroccan French. Okay. Could you say the beginning of it again? Yeah. With his charm, <laughs> intelligence, and good looks, it's no wonder woman like this French actor. It's not the Red Viper, is it? I mean, not to say this is, is it, a... Is it, is it the guy from Wonder Woman 1? He's like part of her squad and he wears like the little little hat. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, I don't know his name. In the movie. I don't know the character's name or Samir any of that. is the character's name. Uh, and the actor's name is Saeed Tagmui. I'm sure I pronounced that he, correctly. He's in Lost. Oh yeah, he is. Is he? Yes, he, he he's is. in Lost. He's uh, he's, he's like a, a part of the crew with the uh, the, the like I don't know the second time around they're coming to uh, they like have they have John Locke's body right? He's part of that crew. Yeah, yeah, he's part of that crew. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't have it on his IMDb. Well, you're a fool, Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that you will lose. <laughs> oh, maybe, I mean, maybe he's a different person. Maybe they just look exactly. Like yeah, him. it's not. I no, mean, it's not it, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that is definitely that guy. I don't know if he has a twin brother or not, but maybe he has a twin brother. Maybe. Anyway, it's uh, Saeed's birthday. So how old is Saeed today? Um, he is fifty-four. Mm, I'm gonna say he's right. forty-nine. Oh, Forty-eight. Oh no! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Shit! Oh, man, what God a great guess. Damn it. Sorry, Matt. That's okay. All right, moving on. While it may be cheaper by the dozen, this actor will go kicking and screaming and be sure to get even Stevens if you don't bring him his favorite food, bacon. Uh, yeah. Adam. It's it's beans from even Stevens. Yeah. yeah. Um, what the fuck is this kid's name? I'll give you a hint. There's three names. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, correct. Henry David Thoreau, <laughs> also correct. I, I, you could his name could be written on the wall in front of me. I don't know <laughs> yeah, it's a very I'm... common name. It's so it's Stephen Anthony Lawrence. Okay. Nope. Best known as Beans <laughs> from Even Stevens. I will give myself a half a point. All right. How old is Stephen today? He is. Shit. Fuck. 30. It's a good guess, but I think he's 31. He's 31 years Let's old. Go! Oh, yeah. That's Let's a big go. one, Matt. Needed that one. Needed it. All right. Next up. While this actress's career is overshadowed by her famous husband, their children are proof that he's no 40 year old virgin. Ooh. Uh, oh. Oh. Wait, say it again. This actress is overshadowed yeah. by her husband. Is it Leslie so, Mann? No. Fuck. Is it? It's Steve Carell's wife. I don't know what her name is. Oh. It is. I'm trying what... to think that. I'm trying to think of the real estate so I can at least get a character name. She's the real estate agent. She is. Oh, uh, Carol. She's Carol from The Office. She is Carol from Fuck. The Office. You want to take a crack at her first name? Uh, the common white woman name Stacy. No, Karen. No, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy. Okay. Nancy Carell. How old is Nancy, Nancy Carell today? Ooh. Um. She's forty-seven. I'm going fifty-three. She's fifty-five today. Ooh. Ooh. Right there. Okay. Right I didn't there. want to insult her by going too high. Even no. if that means losing the point. Hey, you're a gentleman. <laughs> I am a gentleman. <laughs> my points my points will show that I am a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up. 
This fighter pilot turned emergency room doctor will always hold a special place in my heart as the namesake of my golden retriever, Matt. It's Goose. It's Anthony uh, Edwards. Yes. Let's go. Correct. Goose, he was also Dr. Mark Green on ER. Yep. Uh, How old old is... Yes, it is. All 600 million episodes. Yeah, right. How how old is Anthony Edwards today? Uh, (laughs) Anthony Edwards is... Oh, man. He's 56. 56? Adam? I'm going to say 57. He's 59. Oh. <gasps> Damn. Yes. Damn. Dumb. 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 All right. Two more to go. Monsters, demons, and gods that roam the earth are no match for one half of this supernatural brotherly duo who happens to play a toxically masculine monster himself in Adam's favorite TV show of all time. Hey, it's Gilmore Girls. <laughs> um, and it's supernatural, but I don't know either of their names. And I don't know their names from supernatural. Oh, fuck. You got, come on, you got to know this. At least he's, he's like a pretty name. big character in Gilmore Girls. You got at least another yeah, character. He's in the, he's in the early seasons, but I forget what the fuck is Dean is his name in Gilmore Girls. It is. Dean. So I got that. Is his is his real name Jared? Jared Fogel. It is. is it, it Jared? Like, Jared is it like Jared Padalecki something like that? It's exactly Jared Padalecki. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> You want to do you want to know something crazy? So he was like the second on um, on the list of like popular celebrities. You know how many episodes Supernatural has had? Oh, like six hundred, oh, right? Fuckload, like crazy. Three hundred and twenty-seven. That's ridiculous. And it's the uh, it's the last season, right? Or it's over? It was. Like, I think it ended last year. That's okay. insane to me. Yeah. So anyway, he's one half of the Supernatural brothers. And he also plays Dean Forrester, I believe, in Gilmore Girls. What is his name? Jared Padalecki. Padalecki. He's, he is actually he plays uh, Walker Texas Ranger in the in the reboot. Beautiful head of hair. I missed that. Yeah, very good head of hair. I haven't I haven't watched it, but it seems like he would Walker fit in Texas, well. So. Walker Texas Ranger will forever remind me of Conan O'Brien. Yes, <laughs> that's all. That <laughs> that's, that'll be the only thing that I'll ever associate yeah. that with his first Conan O'Brien. <laughs> oh, uh, all right, how old is Jared Padalecki today? 40, 45. No, he's 47. He's not. He's 39. Oh, damn. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's Sorry, Jared. Boy. Yeah. All right. The last one, which you guys will definitely get. If imitation is the game, this actor always wins, whether he's a mathematical genius during World War II, a colonel during World War I, or a peculiar doctor with two no good goddamn hands. Adam. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Correct. Should have threw a should have threw a uh, a Smaug reference. I in was there gonna too. say it, the dragon. Yeah. What's that? From uh, from Lord of the It's from the Hobbit. Well, how would I throw that in there? I don't know. He likes gold. He protects his gold. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, under the mountain. The dragon. Is he in it or is he a voice? He's a voice of the dragon, Smaug. Oh. so he's not an actual he does dragon. The- well, he is. I mean, he does the motion capture for it, and yeah, it's haunting. He actually breathes oh. fire. Yeah, that is. You're right. Oh. It, it is super. Him, him doing the the uh, the the motion capture of the dragon is super fucking scary. Anyway, all right. How old is Benedict Cumberbatch today? He is exactly forty nine years old today. Now, see, I was gonna go in the like the late forties somewhere, but I think that British actors look younger than they actually are. I'm going to say he's 51. No, no. he is 45. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> okay, so the opposite of what I said. Yeah. I was Very hoping good. you were going to go that, and then you were like, they look younger than they are. I was like, oh, no, man. You missed that. <laughs> 45, okay. So not the best celebrity birthdays, but I, I did what I could with what we had. No, that was good. That yeah, was pretty good. well done. Thank you. Oh, wait. That's it for this episode's edition of Celebrity Birthdays. Who was it? Who was it? And now a word from our sponsor. 
Today's sponsor is. Oh, uh, I don't know. What's today's sponsor? You guys have anything you want to pitch? Um, Sheen. Just found this fantastic new website. Uh, men's, women's, animal, baby clothes. It's a Korean website. Uh, great quality, cheap prices. Sheen, S H E I N. You'll love the sheen of it, is their slogan. Oh. Slogan. Whoa. Slogan. Slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Slogan slash logo. That's good. I like it. Matt. What? Matt, you want to hear something wild? So yes. I usually like to like look at the – after the celebrity birthdays, I like to look at you know whose birthday it was. Mm-hmm. And I, I one of my watches was I watched uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 today. And the actor that plays uh, Peter Parker's dad, it's his birthday today. And I have never wow. seen him in anything else. It's very it's weird. That's just wild. It's weird. All right. That's it. Very wild stuff. All right, let's draft. So, iconic movie pets. Uh, I'm very Adam, excited for this draft. Ad, me too. Adam, I believe you have the number one pick, and then it is Ryan, I have the, is I. Yes. I have the number one overall pick. Wow. Now, I'm curious to see where you're going to go, because there's a chance that we continue a streak going over the last few drafts. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. An Austin Power an Austin Powers themed streak. Go ahead. Hey. <laughs> um all right. Well, I, I don't think I'm continuing that streak. The number one movie pet for me is Hedwig from the Harry Potter movies. That's a good one. I had him on my list. Is that Very good. That's the It's oh. a girl, Matt, for your information. I don't know. I only watch the it? movies. She, she it's a girl in the movies too yeah, how often does the does the, the owl get a pronoun pretty Besides often name i don't think so mm-hmm. so she needs to stretch her wings what does he say like, that when the fuck does he, he says say it that? No, he, he says it no he doesn't no, he, he says doesn't. it no harry potter <laughs> never says that no way. well anyway all right, you. she all right go ahead plead your case iconic movie character uh Hedwig always got Harry's back. She's always running errands for him, first of all. Flying all over the globe because I guess wizards don't know how to use a computer uh, to send each other email. And, you know, in the end, she sacrifices herself so he could live. She protects him. Very iconic Harry Potter moment, for sure. Very. So my number one overall pick is Hedwig from the Harry Potter movies and books. Okay. All right, I'm going to go um, – th- this is the first you know, pet that came to mind when I thought of movie pets, so I'm going to stick with them, and that is Shadow from Homeward Bound. Very good. Okay, good one. Voiced by uh, legendary Classic. actor Don, Don Amici. His um, name? Uh, I just uh, – there's three really good animals in that movie. You have Chance, who's Michael J. Fox. Um, I don't know who – who does the cat? But uh, Sassy and Shadow. Sassy is uh. Is that? Um, it's not Sally Field, is it? I don't. I don't know, know why. That, that sounds right, Hon. Uh, you gotta keep talking. I'll hold it up. But anyway, Shadow is you know one of the all-time great movie pets, one of the all-time great movie dogs. He's just a wise old golden retriever who looks out for his friends, whether they be feline or canine. Uh, and he's man's best friend. You know, he's just just a great pet. It brings a tear to my eye just to talk about him right now. Uh. uh Sally Field, you are correct. It was Sally Field. Okay, good. So I'm going with Shadow. Oh, you you are Field. good. Um, it just sounds like something I would convince myself is true, and it's not, so I had to double check. So I actually had them on my list, but I had all three, and I was going to try and plead to you guys that they deserve to go as a as a crew because – Oh, I'm sorry I took that from you. No, no, that's fine. I mean, I just I, – but I that was going to be my I, – because I, because they just – I don't know. It's just like it's an incredible movie, two dogs, one cat, travel across the country. I thought that was pretty cool. It's inspiring. Yeah. Very good. So I got some room here. I'm going to go with, like you said, Ryan, I'm going to go with my first, the first thing that popped into my head from movie pet is going to be Einstein from Back to the Future. Nice. A time traveling dog. In fact, the first time traveling animal of any kind creature. Because if you remember, Doc Brown does do the test. On Einstein. Great dog name. Peter was not happy. <laughs> um, and 
it just was I, I, Einstein was the first thing that popped into my head. Um, so Einstein is going to be my first pick. And then my come around for round two is what I think is the most iconic, iconic movie pet. And that's Air Bud. Air Bud mm. is the is a five sport all pro athlete. <laughs> but not only that, he's like fucking Archie Manning, where he only has puppies that also are good at sports. Yep, true. Buddy. Great offspring. And they still make movies to this day. The Air Buddies movies continue on. His lineage continues on. Air Bud is the number one top tier athlete in any sport. If you remember, he played professional football. Or no, well, high school football. Yeah. But. For a dog, that's that's like it's pretty that's good. A, above professional football, football, basketball, baseball, and tennis. If you can believe it, five sport athletes. <laughs> you think a dog could do that in real life? <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't think so. I, I mean, Airbud did it, so why not reach for the stars? I, I would like to see it. So I'm going, I'd watch it. I'm going with Airbud, number one. All right, number two, number two pick. Number two. All right, my second round pick. I'm going to stick with the K nines, uh, and I'm going to go with Baxter. From Anchorman. Very good. Good one. Uh, Ron Burgundy's loyal compadre. Really, if any any goodness you see in Ron Burgundy is because of Baxter. It's because of his companionship. They have these like enlightening conversations, and I feel like it makes Ron a better person. He also goes through hell and back. Jack Black kicks him off the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think he's, according to Ron, he can speak Spanish, which is pretty impressive. Um, mm. just like not my favorite breed of dog, but Baxter, I think steals the show in that movie. And I think he's what keeps Ron in check, you know? So I think, uh, to me and, and Anchorman's an iconic movie, Ron Burgundy's an iconic character, but you know, the one B to Anchorman I could see as, as Baxter. Very good. Pick. So he, he's my second round pick. Thank you. All right. Adam, All right. You. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am going to make two picks right now that Matt, you are going to be beyond jealous of. <laughs> I'm gar- guaranteed that they're both on your list. Okay. So I'm going to put this one in the second round. I, I am can I, selecting. Can I, give a, can I give a slight hint on one of them? A hint? Uh, it's well. I mean, I just want to see if we're if we're thinking the same thing. Okay. All right, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Yeah, because I don't. If if it's not, then I don't want to take it from <laughs> right, you. Right, if it's right. one that I that's hadn't even thought that, of, that's why I'm thinking. I don't want you to take it. I think you have it. So. I'm my second round pick. I am going with Shadowfax, the Lord of all horses, the fastest horse, <laughs> the greatest in Middle Earth, <laughs> belonging to Gandalf the White. Uh, Shadowfax, not Jeez. only is he the Lord of all horses, he, uh, Matt, what's the line? Shadowfax, says, show them the meaning of haste. Show them the meaning of haste. <laughs> Shadowfax is capable of comprehending human speech and was said to run faster than the wind. Fiercely loyal to Gandalf the White, with a silvery gray coat in daylight and hardly visible at night. That is a good horse. Just a tremendous name, too. Tremendous name. Oh. Shadowfax. So good. <laughs> and, he, and he just shows up. Yeah. Whatever, whatever Gandalf needs, he just shows up. Yep. Here Sounds I like am. an insurance company. That's right. All state. Like, Car- like Carfax. <laughs> Show them the Carfax. Show them the shadow facts. <laughs> Show them the meaning of haste. <laughs> and my th- my third round pick, which I think is the one that you're alluding to, yeah. is Mr. Frankenweenie from the <laughs> Frankenweenie <laughs> movie. God damn it. God damn it. So, Ryan, I don't know if you know about this, but Frankenweenie is a is a short movie. It's a Tim Burton movie. And it got like later recently made into like it's an animated Tim Burton movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. feature length. And and um, it's like the typical Tim Burton cast of characters do the voices in it in the in the animated one. But uh, I love that movie when I was a kid. I used to rent it all the time from Major Video on Mineral Spring Avenue. And then I found out that <laughs> Matt also used to rent that movie all the time at Major Video. So w- whenever I didn't have it, he probably had it. It's so just <laughs> him and I back and forth renting Frank and Weenie. That movie was so, um, I love that movie. It was so it was so quick, right? It was not more than like a normal like TV show. It was like a it was like a half hour or 20 90, yeah. like 25 minutes. And it was it was so good and I used to rent that shit all the time from Major Video. All the time. Yeah. Have you seen the the newer one? The animated one, no. No, it's good. It's yeah. also good. Like they, it, ex- it expands upon it. They do a good um, job with those anime. Those that, I forget what it's the same company that did uh, Coraline and 
What is the other one? I don't know. I forget. But the other one that's like kind of like that. Um, yeah. I, I think you're right. I don't but know. It's, but it's yeah, basically – Brian. Uh, Brian uh, it's basically like the story of Frankenstein but with a dog. Mm-hmm. Like this boy's dog, I think he gets hit by a, he gets hit by a car or something. And the, it's, you know, the boy's name is Victor Frankenstein. And he, he brings her, he brings Frank and Weenie back to life. And uh, the voices of uh, Catherine O'Hara and Martin Short do the voices of Mr. And Mrs. Frankenstein. So they're really funny uh, in it. And um, it's a good movie. Good yeah, movie. I, I, I Classic think it was for me. Something about Frankenstein with the, the title character being Frank and Weenie. Frank and Weenie? <laughs> it's a big giveaway. Did you? Yeah. And I, and I also love those I love those dogs too. The, well the at least the well, I guess the, the animated one is made after the same uh type of dog, but yeah. It was like a hot dog? Yeah. No, they're it's like a bull terrier. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. I like nice. those dogs. Very cute. All right, my third round pick. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna switch it up from the dogs. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to the feline, Ooh. iconic movie pet, Ooh. to Jinxy Cat from Meet the Parents. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. yes, yes. Robert De Niro's that's a, damn, that's probably a good most trusted friend, whether it be human or otherwise. Mm-hmm. She's potty trained. She can kind of sniff out mischievousness which she really didn't trust greg and i don't blame her and you know she is wait now is it a boy or i think it's a i i'm actually not sure i thought it was my my i thought it was a boy but yeah and the more i'm saying it i think it is a boy let me i'll look it up uh jinx from meet the parents i guess it could be either i don't know anyway anyway jinxy cat Great cat. <laughs> very smart cat. Very, very, very smart cat. And kind of goes through, kind of goes through the ringer in that movie. You know, it, it gets does. lost. Milk. And they try, they try to replace it. It's a he. It's a he. It's a he. Okay. But it looks like it was played by four cats, which I guess one of them could have been a female. And some were a female. All, all male. But he, he, yeah. So, I mean, Jinx, that's just, that's an, again, another iconic movie. And Jinxie Cat kind of steals the show. From a great cast too, really got robbed uh, of the Oscar. He Jinx, Jinx is kind of like a fun little like driver of the plot as well. Like mm. Jinx is one of the yeah. main reasons why Fokker gets in so much trouble. Right, so. and yeah, he just keeps getting outsmarted by the cat. I love All right, it. and also like to for you to say it's it's Jack's most trust one of Jack's most trusted confidants, and he's an FBI like a secret FBI agent. Yeah, um, or CIA, <laughs> CIA. whatever it was like you know that that's pretty good. Right, trust it. Says something. Yeah, that's a smart cat. Very good. I'm gonna thank you. All right, Adam. Here's the one that I thought you were gonna get. So now this one, there might be a gray area on ownership of this animal, but it's it's clearly a pet. It's a pet. Okay. This is Jonesy from Alien. Oh, yes, that's a good one. I, I forget whose cat it is, or if it's just the space station's cat, and it's never really brought up. I forget there's any like little hints to like whose it is, but kind of like Ripley, a group pet. Alan Ripley takes you know ownership of it towards the end, trying to save it from the alien. But uh, yeah, yeah, Jonesy in the first one, right? In the yeah, in the original is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. I'm gonna anyway, I'm gonna so, try to figure it out, but if you want to elaborate, iconic iconic movie and really like if you ever see fan art of ripley um or even just fan art of the movie in general there's a good chance that jonesy is added into that because it's just a fun juxtaposition of like this tight quartered space uh of ship not space station ship um the nostromo and this gigantic alien xenomorph and then this little red cat um mm-hmm. it just think that that's fun and that's always added in there and uh just recently in Fortnite, actually, uh, you can download a skin as Ellen Ripley, and on her back is a little like carry case, and Jonesy is in the backpack. I thought that was pretty. Oh, cool. that's Pop, awesome! Popped up into that's pop culture sweet. recently. So yeah, Jonesy. Then I'm gonna come so back. J- around. Oh, what? let's go go for it, Adam. Jones Jonesy was Ripley's cat. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Excellent. Was Ripley Ripley so that, brought Jonesy onto the Nostromo? That makes sense of why she's like so fearlessly taken care of. Jonesy. Although right. if it wasn't my cat, I'd probably still be doing the same thing anyway. All right. 
coming back around for round four, right? Round four. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm going with Mr. Bigglesworth from Austin Powers, which is the one I thought was going to go in the first round. Uh, but did, after it didn't, I, I saved it. Uh, Mr. Bigglesworth, naked cat, um, the, the hairless cat from Austin Powers. Evil cat. Evil cat, Dr. Evil's cat, constantly holding him, stroking him. Uh, very iconic. When you Most of the time when you see Dr. Evil, he's got the cat in his hands, when, especially when he's sitting at the big boardroom table and pushing buttons to knock people into the fire. Um, yeah, uh, self, self-explanatory. Mr. Bigglesworth. He speaks for himself. He does, right, Mr. Bigglesworth. Figuratively. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm going back to the canines for my fourth round pick, and I'm gonna go with. So this is a newer one, but I felt like this pet was uh, obviously a huge part of the movie, particularly the end. And I'm gonna go with Brandy from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, Ooh. Brad Brad Pitt's pit bull. That's a great one. Um, that's a gr- that's a great one. Who was just like a, a very loyal and, you know, you, you kind of he's they're showing you all the scenes like, oh, why do they keep showing Brad Pitt's character like feeding his dog the dog food and, you know, how like well trained it is and all this stuff. And then it all comes around at the end when it it saves his life. Um, so I would love to have Brandy as a pet. I, I feel like it doesn't help the narrative that pit bulls are aggressive breeds of dog, mm-hmm. but um either way she was a great character in a very great movie um so i'm gonna go with brandy from once upon a time in hollywood my wow first, that's, my first that's a great pick right my first childhood pet uh my my family's dog was named brandy oh it wasn't a pit bull but lovely name yeah all right so for the last pick of the fourth round i can't believe that this feline friend made it this far i am going with Thackeray Binks uh, from Hocus Pocus. That's a great pick. That is a great pick. Binks was a great, like, Binks was a cat that made you want to get a cat. You know? Yeah. Binks was a great cat. It talked. You know, he could talk. <laughs> couldn't couldn't <laughs> die. That's right. Couldn't die. No, didn't have to feed him. He was pretty self-sufficient. Like, yeah. that's a cat to have. Right. Um, The talking part really puts it over the top. And, you know, the knowledge of witches and throughout you know being alive for 400 years is also that probably come in handy sometime it's you know for something too but you know uh thackeray banks my fourth round pick solid and then for my fifth rounder hmm i'm between two here i didn't uh i guess I, i guess i could see both of these both of these making it i am going to go with Toothless from How to Train the How to Train Your Dragon movies. That's a good one. I love those. I love those movies. Uh, and who wouldn't want to have like a a black dragon that spits lightning and like you two need each other because like he's got the the bum tail and you got to help him out mm-hmm. so he can fly correctly. So he's dependent on you, and he's not gonna like you know lightning you to death. And uh, have you ever seen? You guys ever seen those movies? I've yeah, not. I, I've seen the first one. I don't know how many there are, but I've seen the first one. I think there's three. I've seen the first two, uh, and I, I I really I really like the both of them. The uh, like the voice acting cast is really good. It's it's like uh, Jay Baruchel and Kristen Wiig and um, Gerard Butler, mm-hmm. Craig Ferguson. Like the voice cast is really good. Jonah, did I say Jonah Hill? No. Um, but like the, the voice acting cast is really good. I think Jon Snow is in it too. Kit? Um, Harrington? I think so. I think he's in the is second and third one. Um, so if you haven't seen those movies, uh, action packed, good family movie. It's like, it's one of those, you know, animated movies that, that is good for kids and adults, but, uh, Toothless is, it would be an awesome pet to have. Very good. Very nice. Good pick. All right. My last pick, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go nuts. Um, although we we met this pet at the end of his life, um, I feel like he, he was he was a good pet. And even though I'm not a fan of this particular type of animal, um, I do feel like, you know, he, he met his demise rather savagely. And I'm going to go with Petey from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, their pet Harry and, and Lloyd's pet bird whose head fell off. But he got a good second life, kinda, 
you know, with Blind Billy. So it wasn't, you know, the afterlife wasn't totally terrible, but I feel like he was, he was a pretty, he was a pretty good, a pretty good pet. And he's iconic because that's one of the more iconic scenes in one of the funniest movies of all time. Yeah. You sold our dead bird to a blind kid. Oh, Oh, baseball cards. (laughs) PD. Hair of it. (laughs) Oh God. Um, I love that movie. Yeah. So I'm going to go with PD. It's, it's like an, it's an out there pick. Because I have so many good ones on my list, but no, that's a good, <laughs> that's awesome. So funny enough, we do the do, do the honorable mentions. Yeah. Um. Funny enough, my final pick, Mister Irrelevant, is another one of Jim Carrey's pets from one of his movies. Ooh, Ooh. I know who you're going with, and that is Spike from Ace Ventura, the Spider Monkey. Okay. Oh, the monkey. Where, where'd you think I was going with it? I thought you were going with Milo from The Mask. Oh, I mean that that would have been a good pick too, but I'm going with yeah. Spike. He spans two movies. He's super helpful in both movies. And just like yep. super cute monkey. He couldn't save that raccoon, but. I thought you were going to say Snowflake. No, <laughs> the dolphin. No, no. Do you know the dolphin? Does he call you at home? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going with Spike. Is my final pick from Ace Ventura, Spider Monkey. Uh, nice. A couple of my honorable men- mentions. Anwar from I Love You, Man. The the dog who uh, Jason Siegel says looks like Anwar Sadat, the president <laughs> of Egypt. Very good one. Uh, I have Lassie on here as a, as a latch ditched effort. Uh, Beethoven. And yeah, that's it. All my other ones either got picked or I said them. Nice. I had like the those and like the classics like Balto and Benji and mm. those that I really wanted. But I also – the one that I was stuck between was uh, – when I decided to go toothless, I was going to go with, with uh, Jack Skellington's Ghost Dog Zero from mm. The Nightmare Before Christmas. I was going to do that one. But just, uh, I just want to give you like a little piece of trivia because, again, I looked at the celebrity birthdays today. And today is Allison from Hocus Pocus's birthday. Wow. There you go. Right? And also that guy, Saeed, is, that guy, Saeed, is Caesar in Lost, Ryan. He is? It's not yes. on his IMDb. But but it is. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see it. What are, um, what are your honorable be? mentions? Um, so since I'm such a huge pothead, I picked Fox from Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've read four and a half books, so it's not a big deal. Uh, Beefy from Little Nicky. Whoa. Uh, Hercules from The Sandlot, also known as The yep. Beast. Oh uh, man, Sam. that's an iconic movie pet. Yeah, I know. I wanted. Damn. I was trying to fit him in somewhere, but that is an iconic one, especially for our generation. Yeah, like everyone knows Hercules. Yep. Um, Sam, the the German Shepherd from I Am Legend. Um, yeah. Milo from The Mask. Toto from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's a fucking good one too. Wow. Yeah. Toto is a um, really good one. Bruiser from Legally Bond. Blonde, uh, Reese Witherspoon's uh, dog, Hooch from Turner and Hooch, uh, Babe, that'll do pig, mm-hmm. and uh, Doug from Up. Ah, uh, that's oh, the yeah. one I couldn't think of the name. I was like, yeah, I forget the name. Super happy probably. golden retriever. Yep, yeah. and could talk. And could talk. So many, that, this was a good one. There were so many good ones to pick from. And there's probably a ton that we didn't even think of. So, yeah. So, again, that was our draft of the iconic mo- uh, movie pets. We are going to – right now there's a poll going on. If you're listening to this right as we post it, there's still a poll going on for um, worst movie bosses from last week. You can go ahead and vote. It's pinned at the top of our um, Twitter, at Average Nobodies, but you can also go through the thread and see which one, which wh- who we picked, each of us, who our picks were. And also when that is over – I will put up a poll on Average Nobodies for this draft, and you can vote in who won. Put in your picks if we didn't already mention them, and tell us what you thought. At Average Nobodies. Hey, how about how about Lindy attacking me yesterday, saying my my you. picks were garbage? Well, she she attacked mo- mainly because she said that Voldemort shouldn't count as a boss. Why well, he is a boss? I, I mean, she said he's not a boss. Who? He's the he's the Voldemort. boss of all those Lindy people. Said. Uh, he's the bo- He's the leader. Would you consider like? Would you consider Joe Biden a, like the boss of you? If a coach 
can be you know, you considered a boss, then Voldemort can be considered which, a boss. Which co- I forget now. Which coaches were in there as bosses? I think Ryan had had a coach. Yeah, but he. Yeah, but I mean, you people do work for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and they get paid. Like, I don't know. I don't know if Voldemort has anybody getting... on his payroll. All right, if He's Scar, if Scar was a boss, right? I mean, then I think, I, Voldemort I, I, was a boss. Well, no, I, I, right? Yeah, I, think, I think I think there's a gray area for organized. some people. I think there's a gray area for some of the picks, but that's the beauty of it. We argue it. We see what the people think. <laughs> Lindy just she called your picks. I believe Garbaggio. <laughs> Which Garbaggio I think is, which was I, the term, but I think is a is a just a tad bit harsh. But. Yes, that's ex- <laughs> yeah, boy. She also Lindy, protects her tweets, saw, so you can't put her on blast. You can't retweet her or anything. I also I saw like I saw it come across my phone, and I was like, "Ooh, Lindy probably had my back. She probably loved my picks." And then, nope, she just <laughs> fucking dogged me. <laughs> to to be fair, she didn't like my picks either. She didn't like my picks either. So, she well, let's get her she on she's here. Better than us. Tell her to make some picks. That's what I said. So anytime, anywhere, she's like, I don't understand the, I don't understand the point of the drafts, and I explained to her like it's like how we do the fantasy draft. Why is the like, sky yeah. blue? And then I'm like, and then she's like digging deep into it. I'm like, I think you're missing the point. I think yeah. you're like, I think you're thinking way too far into this. Anyway, all right, that was the draft. Uh, I'll go first because I haven't been watching shit. I watched Space Jam. Um, that's oh, the one, it? and I didn't even finish it. Um, I started it. I got 20 minutes in and I had to turn it off because, but uh, so, and then I, and then I, and then I continued to watch some more, but the first day I sat down, I put it on and I had to stop because the first 15 minutes is just like the movie giving a blow job to LeBron James and I couldn't watch it anymore. Like I even like LeBron James. I think he's super talented and I think that he doesn't deserve a lot of the hate he gets. But the first 15 minutes is just what they're going to show when he retires and joins the Hall of Fame. Like, that's, gotcha. uh, that's all it is. It's like, oh, he's this kid from Akron, and he, and he went to Miami, and he won the champ, and then he went back to Cleveland and won there, and then he went to Los Angeles, and he won there. And it's like just highlights of him, and it's just, like, awful. Um, he's, yeah, we, we didn't need that for the, Mike, for the first Space Jam. Everybody fucking knew who Michael Jordan was. was yeah, I mean, Michael Jordan is a transcendent athlete as well. But anyway, and then I continue watching a little bit more today, and just like it, there's some fun parts in it, but I don't know. It just like wasn't. It's just not for me. I don't know. It, and that, and that's what it is. It's not for me. It's for a younger generation for sure. Mm-hmm. So it didn't really like have the. It didn't capture the imagination like the first Space Jam did, um, for me. So that's that's where I'm at with that. I'm gonna watch it, but I'll, we'll see how I feel. Yeah. It doesn't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's just weird, like, you don't need to, if you're making a movie, like, yes, he's the star in the movie, but one of the, it's almost like, it's almost like you're, it's taking you out of watching a movie. One, like, one, one of the, one of my favorite parts of the original Space Jam is, and like, this is minor spoilers, it's not, like, really, um, they follow the, a very similar formula, if you can imagine, like, don't, don't fix it if it ain't broke, but right. in one of the ways they diverge is that in the first Space Jam, one of the things I loved about it was you, you, you have these scenes of the Monstars going to Earth out of Toon World and collecting the powers of all of these current NBA legends. Right. Uh, current and, you know, you know, all these NBA greats. And I thought that was awesome. And they, like, touch the ball and the powers are in the ball. And then the Monstars get the balls, the ball, and it, you know, the, the powers get put into them. And they all act and look like kind of look like the 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 superstars that they are stealing the powers from anyway in this one it's like basically a five minute throwaway line lebron james son is making a video game he scanned in all of his dad's friends quote unquote who ends up being like superstar wnba and nba athletes and that's it and that's how he that's how don Cheadle creates his goon squad it's just like it's such a stupid throwaway line when they could have had like other NBA stars in the movie like acting in bigger roles, and I thought that would be cool, but mm. no, not at all. Mm. And other no, than that, that's it. I haven't, like it. I haven't been watching anything. Nothing. That's it. So, so Space Jam ruined TV and movies for you? Well, no. I mean, Space Jam I watched over the last couple of days, but the rest of the week, I don't, I really just have no excuse. I just have really haven't been watching anything. I put on like a couple nights. I was like doing some stuff in the background. I was doing some editing, and I had. 
Um, I put on one of the Fast and Furious movies, and I just was like listening to that. But that, other than that, nothing really new. Nice. So. I'll go next, Adam. Cause mine, mine's a little shorter than yours. Yeah, um, you got a big list. I like it. So uh, as far as continued watching, uh, still watching Dave. Uh, Matt, have you seen the latest? Or Adam, I know you're watching now too. Yeah, so I've seen the first five. I don't know if I've seen the newest. Like, I don't know if I'm up to date or not. So the newest one was with Doja Cat. Nope. And like they met on like a dating app. Her, him and Dave. Or her and Dave. No, I have. I haven't so seen that one. So very good. A very unique way uh, to film an episode, the way they did it. And it, it was kind of cool. It was like they had like social tiers. So like Dave is a celebrity, but he's not on the level of Doja Cat. She's just like this like extremely popular person. So they would check in with her throughout the episode. And like she's constantly being pulled in a million different directions. Like, she needs to be at a photo shoot here. She needs to do a voice over here. And it's just, like, craziness. And then you have Dave, who's, like, a little below that. So she and Dave met on a dating app. And then Dave was also going on a date with someone else. And she was more of, like, a normal person. So you had, like, this normal person's life, which is just, like, our life. And then Dave's, which was kind of crazy. But then Doja Cat, which was, like, to the extreme. And Mm -hmm. it was cool. They just kept, like, checking in with all three of them throughout the episode um it, it was it was really it was like a very interesting episode it, and I, I really liked it i think it it's coming back into season one form now with what they've been doing um especially like the kareem abdul jabbar one mm. and then the bot i don't know if did you see the bar mitzvah one no yes yeah so that was the one so, before this one that one was really funny i was crying when with the, the one with him and benny blanco like just <laughs> Hanging out together, Chuck. progressively getting weirder and weirder. I think so, Chuck? <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> oh, man. So very much enjoying Dave. Um, I knew I knew it would, you know, find its way. But it, I like it because it takes a lot of risks, too. Like, it's not a formulaic, normal sitcom. Mm. Um, so no, take risks. And, and some of it, some of them hit, some of them, you know, miss. But it's never, like, a tragic miss. Like they're always enjoyable. Just some are some episodes are better than others. Um, still watching Physical, and that's the Rose Byrne show on Apple Plus. Um, that one is like episodic as well. So new episodes I think come out on Friday. Uh, it's it's still good. It's still really fun. I love her internal monologue. It's it's just so funny. It's such a funny way to like show multiple sides of the same character because externally to like all people she's just like you know she's an 80s housewife like she doesn't want to ruffle any feathers and she doesn't want to do all this stuff but whenever she's meeting someone like it she'll have her internal monologue and they'll they'll say it out loud (laughs) and it's just super funny like how she really feels about people um but really really well done rose byrne is just excellent in it um so anyone who has apple plus if you're looking for a new show i would uh, definitely highly recommend physical and then i watched um the first two Fear Streets, so the Fear mm-hmm. Street trilogy on um, Netflix. So I'll wait for Adam you to like talk about the first two, but I watched the '94 and I watched the 1978. Uh, I enjoyed okay. both. I thought they were both really really good. So I'll just I'll just hop right into them. Then yeah. we'll, like we'll just cross into my list too. So I, I watched all three, but we'll only talk about the first two. Um, and like the more I remember, I told you that I wasn't like too impressed with the first one. Mm. Then after I watched the other two, I was sort of like, maybe it was done like that on purpose to be like sort of a, a 90s slasher movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe that it like, was very campy. That's what it was. Yes, exactly. But then uh, I thought the second one, which was actually set in a camp, was awesome. That one was yeah. probably my favorite one, 78. Um, all like, I mean, they all t- really take place in, in one night each. But uh, yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed the the camp setting, and it really like you got into the history of you know the witch Sarah Fear, uh, and then in the third one you get to see like actual Sarah Fear, and the coolest thing is like they repurpose all the actors and actresses to play someone in at least two of the movies. You know what I mean? So like even the people that get killed off early in the first one that actor or actress like they they play somebody in the third one yeah you know? i saw because after the second one they play the trailer for the third one and it was like the same cast just as different characters yeah i thought that so, was really cool 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I like the there's like a Stranger Things crossover too with Maya Hawk and um, Sadie Sink, I think is her name, the redhead. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Um, she was Ziggy in the second one, so that that's kind of cool too. She she yeah. she was really good in that. It makes me want to see like more of her in Stranger Things. She was, and that was a, a like a good twist they did with her character too yes. in the yes. second one. Well, because the whole time I'm like, okay, like you know who C. Berman is and blah blah blah. Right. Thing, but yeah. So that that was very cool at the end, and I like how they worked in the cop too. In the second yes. one, like how he was at there and how like you know he kind of just wanted to further his career because that's what his dad would have wanted, and that was like a cool right. subplot. Yeah, yeah, I- I'm excited for you to see the third one. Let me know when you watch it. I will. Um, I also went to see Black Widow in theaters. I I really enjoyed it. Um, my my only gripe with it really was that it was five years too late. Um, you know, if it came out directly, it takes place after Civil War. If it came out directly after Civil War or shortly after, like, you know, we probably could have gotten one or two more Black Widow movies out of it, which would have been dope because it's like a whole different thing. It's like a, it's like a spy movie. It's not like a your she doesn't have powers. So it's not like your regular superhero movie. You know what I mean? It's it's a spy movie. And um, like this, like uh, Florence Pugh, like the Scarlet was great. But the, the supporting cast really still like, as Matt says, really stole the show. Mm. Like Florence Pugh, David Harbour. And um, what's the what's the other uh, what's the other the last woman's name, Matt? Um, uh, so Rachel um, Weiss. Yeah, Rachel Weiss for like the mummy and stuff. Yes. So, like, the supporting cast really, really stole the show. And then, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. French from The Departed. Yes. Ryan, yeah. He, yeah. he's he, he's okay. the bad guy. He's, Ooh. like, the Russian, you know, uh, um, what's his name? Not Dragonoff. Drakeoff. He's, like, this, you know, he, like, creates the Black Widows. You know what I mean? And so he's the bad guy. He's he's good as the bad guy, like a really intimidating Russian sort of not mobster or anything, but he does. A, he does a really good job, too. Um, what else do I have on here? So I watched a couple Stephen King things. I watched 1922. It's a Netflix movie with Thomas Jane. It was OK. Like it wasn't like super scary or anything, just sort of like fucked up. Then I watched Children of the Corn. It's been on like my um my Hulu watch list for years now. And I finally watched it. It was terrible. It wasn't, it wasn't even remotely <laughs> scary. Uh, I can see it like being scary, like, you know, 30 years ago, but it, it wasn't scary. It doesn't age um, into the scariness. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think it, it would be primed for a remake. It could be cool with the remake with some twists, but it was just like really cheesy. Um, I finished watching Glow, and it's a crime against humanity that they ended it the way they did, especially after I found out that season four was written and being filmed, and then COVID hit, and they just pulled the plug completely. Yeah, so that's that's fucked. They had they had they had an episode and a half filmed of the final season, and they just said, "Nah, you're done." That's fucked up. Such a great show. It really was. Um, I watched this movie, uh, on Netflix called horse girl <laughs> with, um, what, what the fuck is her name? Um, is it a sequel to horseman? The one I watched last week? No, it's <laughs> Alison Brie. Alison Brie is in it. Oh and yeah. I, I've seen it. I saw the trailer. Yeah. Looks weird. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Is um, it? <laughs> yes, it's weird. It's called horse girl. So it's about this girl. She's like, sort of a loner doesn't have a whole lot of friends she has a roommate oh, who's really she? nice she's a she has, loner she has a, room, she has a roommate that's really nice to her she works at like an arts and crafts store and she loves her horse but it's not her horse anymore uh for whatever reason so like she still goes to see it all the time and you can like, kind of tell the people at the stables are like all right lady move on um and she like sleepwalks at night and she has like these weird dreams and like she just she she goes off the deep end um it's pretty wild um i don't know if i don't know how to, else to recommend it it was okay um i watched devil all the time with tom holland like among others 
Bobby Pattinson, Sebastian Stan, um, what's his face from it? Bill Skarsgård. Awesome movie. Yes. Awesome. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Who else is in it? That's the, where um, Bobby Pattinson has the weird accent. Yeah. He plays okay. a preacher. Yeah. yeah and yeah, who's yeah. the guy? Uh, who's like the the guy who like films? He likes to take pictures. J- Jason Jason Clark. Yes. I thought I love you. That guy. I thought you already saw that. Adam. Did we talk about this or did you not? Have seen I, it? I I watched it. Oh, so I, I, I yeah I had seen it too. Yeah. And then what? What? Uh, Riley Keough plays Jason Clark's wife. She's good yep. too. Um, She's, just yeah, like an, just an that. awesome, yeah, just an awesome story. Like, in like, you see it, like a chunk of time with Bill Skarsgård plays Tom Holland's dad, and you see his life and how it ends, and then like you know why. So you get the picture of why Tom Holland's character is the way that he is, and then you get like pieces of other characters, and they all really come together at the end, which is uh, it was a great movie. That was that was a movie theater quality. Netflix movie for me. Oh, yep. 100%. It's like Mudbound. They put it in the same category. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Thank you. I watched uh Chef with John Favreau oh, for the God. first time. Oh awesome really? movie. What? I've never seen time? it before. Oh dude, it's yeah. so good. Oh my God. No, really, really tremendous movie. I can That's see that like having a, such a good such a feel good movie. Um now, do yourself awesome a cast. favor and listen to the soundtrack. They had yes. the soundtrack killer soundtrack incredible and also John Favreau put together he had a whole separate album of music that he wanted to include in the movie but didn't and that's also an album on Spotify and iTunes it's a like volume 2 it's so good yeah that's cool John Favreau is like that guy is the man he knows exactly what he's doing he's he knows his so audience good, yeah. like and like what is it? uh uh, so he's at the beginning of the movie. He's dating Scarlett Johansson, but yeah. his ex-wife is Sophia Vergara. Yeah, this right. guy must have a fucking. He must have a log. God damn! Right? Like, <laughs> well, it must be nice to just cast yourself with these beautiful women. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, right? I'm dating Seinfeld. Scarlett Johansson, and my ex-wife is Sophia Vergara. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. And his buddy, uh, his buddy from Iron Man, is in it as well. Robert Downey Jr. Yep. I yeah. so I did not know Robert Downey Jr. was in it. So that was an awesome like surprise. Um, he really did all the training, right, too. Matt? Like all the chef yes, training. He did. Yeah. Oh, all, you could tell. All could the tell. chef hand work is him. All that is him. Uh, Bobby Cannavale is so good in it. Um, who's his? John Leguizamo is in that too. Yes, right? John. That's John. Yes. Yeah, he was awesome. The son, the actor that played the son, was really good. Another fun fact about the movie: all the marketing material, the posters, all of the signage for the movie was done by Robert Downey Jr. He's like oh, that's a, cool. in his in his spare time, a hobby of his is graphic design, and he made all the posters for John Favreau. Very cool posters. It's like the, it's a plain like a magenta background. I think it's magenta, and it's just a fork, and then there's a food truck sticking on the fork. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty badass. But anyway, so yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Awesome. did it. Yeah, huh? Yeah, that's great. Great movie. I'm very happy that I you know it's been that's another one that's been in my like my my watch list for a while. Um, another one that's been in my watch list for a while is Sonic the Hedgehog. Haven't seen it. Very funny. Yeah, it's good. Jim Carrey. The one with Jim Carrey? So the whole movie is an ad for like various products. Like they're like Zillow.com and it's very shameless. Um, Applebee or no, the Olive Garden and like very shameless ads. But uh, Jim Carrey is Ace Ventura with a mustache. Almost every – like it's classic Jim Carrey with the faces and the physical comedy and every almost every line out of his mouth is hysterical. Mm. It's very like cute movie. Very you know I I enjoy watching it. Um, today I watched The Amazing Spider-Man two, which was awesome. Uh, I'm really hoping that Andrew Garfield gets another chance to be Spider-Man in No Way Home because like he was really great as Spider-Man, and the chemistry between him and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy was pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I'm like. Uh, watching that movie it sort of made me think that like they sort of like just like out of nowhere pulled the plug on the amazing spider-man 3 because they were going to do sinister 6 yeah but there's a lot part of, of me thinks yeah part of me thinks that like maybe they knew they lost something when they killed off gwen stacy like ah shouldn't have done that yeah maybe. she was great maybe <laughs> but didn't they also um, introduce mj in that no, so they were gonna, but she her scenes got cut. It was uh, 
Shailene Woodley, Aaron, ah, Aaron Rodgers' right. fiance, she was cast as um, MJ, yeah. but all of her scenes got cut. Uh, even like Jamie Foxx as Electro and Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn, like those were those were good. I thought there was rumors they were that good. Jamie Foxx was going to reprise that role in the MCU. Oh no, he is. That's he is. not a rumor. Oh, he but is. He is. Oh, sweet. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I watched the first season of The Life and Times of Tim. So happy I have those DVDs. I was actually thinking, Matt, I wonder if there's a way you could put those on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I could. It's it's a little more difficult they're to do episodes. shows, but I could do it. Yeah, you can. So I can set up a whole different server for just TV shows because I have a few TV shows that I want to put up there. But yeah, I can figure it out. But there's it just sucks you can't watch it anywhere. Right. It's not. It's like. I'm sure there are other HBO shows that aren't on HBO Max, but like this one is not. And this show is truly, truly fucking hilarious. Yeah. Tim, the if if people like, you know, whoever listens to our podcast, if if anybody wants to watch like an a crudely animated show with the dry it like it's dry humor. It's about this guy, Tim, 20 something year old nobody, lives in New York City with his girlfriend, works for a giant corporation. And every episode is like an episode of Curb or Seinfeld where, like, he gets himself into a situation and nothing he does or says gets him out of it. It just gets him in. He gets dug deeper and deeper, and he never ends up on the winning side of anything. That's um, so funny. It, it's a really great show. I'm, I'm going to watch season two tomorrow. So I'm going to I'm gonna aim to, hit, like, have it done and bring it to you on uh, on Wednesday, Matt. Yeah. I need. I, I'll give so it a can, try. It's such a funny. You can show. do with it what you will. It's such a funny show. But yeah, I had a, I, another another monster watch oh. week for me. Looks um, like. So if, if anybody's got some suggestions for me, I am my my ears are open. Did you? I really want to watch. Zero? Are you all done? Yeah, with it? yeah, yeah. I loved it. Um, I really want to watch Gamora Ryan's show, but like I watch these like, and I'm on my laptop. You know what I mean? So I'm in and out. So with the show with subtitles, where I really need to pay attention, I can't do that. Fair enough. So attention. I am I am watching season four of Gamora now because HBO finally added it, and it's just as good, if not better, than the earlier seasons. It's no. ju- it's just good such a great know. show. And I also I meant to uh, mention I watched A Quiet Place Part Two again, but like actually watched it because it's on <laughs> it's on it's on Paramount Plus. So I did like a free trial of Paramount. Watch A Quiet Place Part Two over the weekend. I missed a lot. I missed a lot of the, <laughs> the plot, and you know, when you're watching it on some guy's phone, and every two seconds it's like he's yeah, getting a text message. It's yeah. Yep. I missed the whole like dive symbolism thing. You know, when oh, yeah. he was he was like asking at the baseball game at the beginning, and then yeah. Oh, you haven't seen it? Nope. What? I mean, that, uh, that that's oh. barely a spoiler. It's not a well, spoiler. I mean, it's not. Well, I just in case. Okay, but oh, anyway, I, mi- I missed a lot because a lot of it's sign language and silly, and there was no subtitles in the one I was watching. So, is it Killian? What's Kill- the name? It's Killian. Okay. Killian. I don't think it's Cillian. It's not Cillian. But I should be talking. I'm post humorously. <laughs> what is that? Again? What is the a- what is he the bubbled. actual word? Posthumous. 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 Okay. Got it. Which is stupid Posthumous. because the word post is in there. That's right. Thank you, Ryan. Post is Maybe it is Cillian Murphy. Yes, it's <laughs> not. It's not Cillian. It's post-humorous and it's Cillian Murphy. <laughs> Fine, then it's Gal Gadot. Fine. Instead of Gal it Gadot. is Gal Gadot. It is Gal Gadot, though. Gal Gadot That's makes more God. sense. But Mickey know. Silent T. Very good. Very good. Is that it? I believe so. That's all I got. Cool. So... Again, you can vote on last week's uh, worst movie bosses. And also for this week, we're going to be putting up the iconic movie pets poll. So it's going to be on our Twitter. I'll put a whole thread. I start it with where you can watch and listen to the podcast. And then I go through and I put everybody's picks on each tweet. And then I end it with a poll. And you can vote there. Uh, Also comment and tell us if we missed any, if you agree or disagree with any. Or if you like Lindy, just call people out for Garbaggio picks. Garbaggio. I you know what? Next time, n- next time I I come and stay at your house and use the guest room, I won't I won't be so so generous with going downstairs with my morning <laughs> BM. <laughs> that's fair. I think that's only fair. 
<laughs> you deserve that. Lindy, Lindy came at your throat. You know, I could have been, I could have been a, an inconsiderate person and blown up your bathroom upstairs. But I chose to go downstairs. Peeled the paint off the walls. Next time you need <laughs> to choose violence. Choose violence, right? All right, that's the average nobody's podcast number one two five for July nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and we'll talk to you next week. See ya.